Welcome to Divorce TV. I'm your host, Wally Marcus. Our topic today is divorce and art, and my guest is Tucson artist Barbara Nersessian. Um, you can get more information about our show at our website. And also, if you're interested in being a guest or you have ideas or you have questions you want to ask us, please email us at divorcetvaz at gmail.com. Barbara, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here um, and talk about a topic a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but uh, <laughs> not out of your comfort zone. But, but before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, first of all, I want to thank you very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate being able to be here today. Can you tell us a little bit about, once again, about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm here from San Francisco about four years, and I'm one of your local Tucson artists. I show in some galleries along University Avenue and Geronimo Square, and that's a little bit. <laughs> and when you're not uh, painting, and what do you else do you do? I'm a certified professional coach, and I coach uh, individuals as well as executives and corporate people. Can you see a relationship between art and coaching? Absolutely. What's, what's the relationship between <laughs> art and coaching? Well, you know, art is one of those things that is a very personal uh, inner perspective of, of the environment and the universe. And people themselves have a personal feeling about art, which is all over. Whether it's in the desert or... Remember I told you I would ask you questions we hadn't talked about in advance. It always pops into my mind. But I mean, is the coaching... You ever you screen people by having them do artwork? Because we're going to talk a little bit <laughs> later about doing art therapy. No, actually, I don't. All right. Um, I think it's... You know, we're going to talk a little bit about... This is a topic that's always fascinating. I mean, I think a little bit about artists who have done paintings when they go through a divorce. We're going to show some slides. People who use it as a theme, children, mm -hmm. and which we've all seen sort of going how they, they represent themselves and a little bit about art therapy. But before we go there, mm -hmm. and I think you asked me this question, we started talking about doing the topic is, what is art? Well, it's, art, art is a very personal thing. And for everybody, art is something different. So we have art in every aspect of our life. So when you're looking at things, whether it's uh, a painting or a drawing or you're listening to music or you're watching a play, it's all art. Okay, and well, I think we're gonna mostly looking at paintings, but I think mm -hmm. it's clearly there's different media. I mean, there's sculpture. Sure. I think mm -hmm. we're gonna look at least one piece of sculpture, one, some photographs do that, but and then mm -hmm. I guess there are other, other ones too, but you primarily do uh, I, I primarily do the painting and sculpture. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the slides. We're going to go through a whole bunch of slides at this point. And there's our first slide, which is uh, called The Two Fridas by Never Frida Kahlo. Kahlo? I always yeah, get it wrong. But what do you, th what do you think yeah. about this? This is pictures of her, the two of, mm -hmm. two of her, and uh, two different personalities. What, and this is uh, when she was apparently going through some of her marital problems that, uh, that she did mm -hmm. this painting. What do you think about that? Yeah, she's looking at herself from both sides, so it's like a two-sided coin. So the one side was the marriage side, the other side was uh, the divorce from the marriage. And you can see that she has a bleeding heart because she's lost part of herself in that marriage. Is there also, I think in the mm -hmm. picture, there seems to be a, uh, a the connection of the two hearts, and one heart's broken and one heart's not. Is that, am I seeing that? Yeah, it looks like that to me. Um, when she was married, she was a full-hearted uh, individual, and she shared that heart with her husband. And when she went through the divorce, it looks to me as though the part that she lost was the, the other half of herself, the, the husband. That's good. But why? You know, one of the things we talk about in some of these pictures, it seems to me, and we can see more of them too, that they're two women. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to understand why. I mean, you'd think there'd be a man and a woman in the picture, mm -hmm. and you're dealing with divorce, but it seems to be very often in a lot of these pictures that we're looking, you're going to look at it too. Mm -hmm. is it, any yeah. sense of what that's, or is it dependent if it's a female or male artist, do you think? <laughs> male artists do too? Well, yeah, I would think that um, in, any case, in any divorce, whether it's a male or a female, if you're looking at the female, you're going to see two parts of that individual. When you're looking at a male, you're going to see two parts of the male. But why... Well, because because one, one, one part was with another person, they shared a life, and the other part is a separation. Okay, but it really yeah. seems to show before, like a before and after kind of a, a scenario on them. Right. Okay, when you're, when you're painting, mm -hmm. how do you, I mean, how, I mean, you're seeing some of the picture we just saw doing that. How, well, how, does, how do you feel as an artist when you're sort of looking at that? And, I mean, how, do you get, how does she do that? <laughs> how, do, how does Freda make yeah. that distinction? Well, 
all artists, they go inside themselves. And so what comes out in the painting really comes from the universe. And so it was her divided herself in that painting, and that's how it came out. And that was a healing. It, it, it was healing for her. So you think it was, okay, so I'm just trying to say what she was accomplishing in that one. What about the, a little bit of the colors and things mm -hmm. like that? Did they think any difference on that? Well, it seemed to me that in the marriage, when she was married, that the, the, the painting had a white dress, and so there she was pure, she was whole, as she knew it from, the, from, from society. And then when she was divorced, the colors changed. They were actually more vibrant, if you notice, that they were a lot more colors. So she was seeing more sides of herself. I don't know if you, you find this, it seems to be somebody's going through the trauma of divorce or using this mm -hmm. as a theme, but I, I sort of felt sometimes when I've done art not in the caliber that you do, but mm -hmm. it's like you're, you almost do it automatically. It just sort of yeah. flows out of you. And it's a very strange, I think a strange <laughs> sensation almost, where you're, it's, you know, as I said, your mind seems to be, it's so maybe sort of straight from the emotion to the hands to yeah. the, the canvas, I guess. Do you, do you feel that at all when you're um, painting? You think she was doing something like that too? Yeah. It, you're exactly right on that uh, on that count. What happens when the artist is doing the painting or the drawing, um, we're totally unaware of what is actually going to transpire on the painting because that is coming from inside of ourselves. That's coming from our soul. So when it comes from the soul, you never know exactly what's going to transpire. The, the technical part how people draw, that depends on their training. That's good. Okay, let's, let's look at the next slide at this mm -hmm. point. We finished in that one. Let's see the next slide, which I think is going to sort of be interesting because I, I sort of refer to this one as, as the ink blot, which is, a, once again, it was a divorce uh, pig, painting by a Pierre, mm -hmm. Peter Ustusian, okay? And, okay. And, and this was as a divorce theme. Yeah. Um, and maybe you can explain it, <laughs> it to me. Um, I like it, but I don't see divorce in that. I see yeah. the dark colors, the red colors. Right. What do you? Uh... I, I see a lot of anger. I mean, if if you if you look at it, red really kind of denotes anger, and then you see all these uh, points that pull out the oh, they look like pins. Um, so the anger is going in all directions. I think in a divorced couple. Both of them are showing anger at first, and that's um, actually, you, since you do divorce mediation, this would probably be a really good start to go into helping these people out of their anger. Do you see a male or female uh, presence at all in this? It could be either one. Either one? Yeah. Either one? Or, or now Both. it says we're moving into uh, <laughs> these gay marriages as well. We can do that one. I mean, do you think it's that? But does that really convey the social message? Is it, I mean, Absolutely. if somebody had seen that picture yeah, without I, knowing that it was it's a theoretically a divorce theme, I'm not sure. They would see anger. They'd see anger, but mm -hmm. they wouldn't necessarily. But in anger, I guess, is a, is a large... A the, large part of the divorce right. on that one. But, uh, I mean, that was a real contrast between yeah. the first slide we looked at and the second mm -hmm. slide we looked at, which was... Right. Uh, because this is, this is the abstract part that came out of the person who did that painting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the quotes that he says, though, is something on, on the, the caption is, can someone please tell me what is going on? So uh -huh. maybe, I mean, part yeah. of that, to me, which was confusion, mm -hmm. a little confusing, maybe it was also expressing, you know, expressing some of his... Could very well be. His confusion sure. as well. So, sure. Yeah. How did something so wonderful turn into something that is not so wonderful right now? Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to comment on that one, or should we go to the next nope. one? We can go to, go the, next to the next one. slide. The yeah. next one's a Dutch painting uh, by 19th century artist uh, Van Delar. Okay, now this is, a, I guess, sort of almost like a divorce scene. Now, this is a much more traditional picture of that one, although it's interesting, there's a little child mm -hmm. in the picture, too, and it looked like between the two parents and maybe even at a... A, in a court situation, which is unusual because in, in courts I've never seen the children a child come to court ever on that one. But there seems to be in the expressions of the two people looking down. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it looks to me like both of them have their hands on the child, and both of them are are looking away from the child. So that's kind of an interesting thing. The child is kind of looking confused, straight on. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure who the other people are on that one, but. Uh, I think this one, would, I would be 
fairly convinced that that one might, was sort of a divorce on that one. I think yeah, that was. Yeah, that looks like. I it, mean, I think yeah. one of the things. Uh, I guess they were sort of looking when I was doing the research on this. Is is it accessible? Is it easy for the viewer to understand? Mm -hmm. And compared to the last picture, it seems to me uh, that was pretty easy to understand. Pretty understand. understand. Although I'm not sure. What do you think they were? The artist was trying to convey there. I think the artist was trying to convey that um, that the child was in the center of this, and what was to be done was going to be decided by other people. So even in the 19th century, <laughs> there, were, there were problems with children's in custody I, and custody in think traditional. So. I'm not familiar with 19th century divorce, <laughs> Dutch divorce law. But I mean, because I mean, it's it's changed and has been much more balanced right. on that one. But maybe maybe you know the the father gets the child and the mother has nothing to say about it or something like that. So she was a little. A little frustrated with it, oh, the whole thing. It looks but, like uh, that. Yeah. Um, on that one. Let's go to the next slide, which is called Family Family Drama. Um, and it's by an artist named Mai Ki. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's a, once again, I know, you think this is accessible? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It looks like two children in the background, and the mother is in the foreground, and she's not looking at the children. She seems to be looking basically into herself. What's the idea do you think they're trying to communicate here? That she's lost her children. Lost her children. Once again, no, just the, just the two children in the background, mm -hmm. the, uh, the mother in the foreground. Mm -hmm. And is that, I can't tell if it's a little bit somebody on the right. Is there somebody on the right, another face, or that's just part of the tree? I can't tell. Um, you know, I think it's part of the tree, but if you, if you look at it hard enough, it, it, it could be kind of like an outside force. What about the colors in this one? Well, the colors in this one are a little more vibrant. They, it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be much anger there. It seems that a new beginnings. That's, I mean, the orangey and the yellow colors are kind of like a new beginning, maybe. It's sort of interesting. On the two pictures that we've seen now, it's sort of the the woman somehow leaving the children, which I think, strangely yeah. enough, is is not the traditional view until. Mm -hmm. I mean, now it's much more of a sharing of children, mm -hmm. joint custody. Before, I mean, it was fairly accepted. I thought that mm -hmm. uh, women uh, women got the children, and you'd think there would be a man in the picture. Well, I think it depends on uh, when these were taken place, because I think that the husband usually got the children. You mean historically before? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I haven't looked back historically before that, that yeah. uh, the woman didn't get the children at all. I have to, that's something I'm going to have to go back and look at, because I, yeah, I mean, historically, I so. certainly with the tears that I've been practicing mm -hmm. law, were changed, the, it was almost presumed mm -hmm. that the wife was going to get the child. A lot of the father's groups now don't do that, but the paintings seem to be conveying a, a different thing. I'm not sure there's a male or female artist again. I'm, <laughs> I'm still wondering whether yeah, that... Yeah, I don't know that either. Or maybe I mean, some of this may also mm -hmm. be a question of loss. I wonder if the, the woman still feels, even if that somehow the relationship with the children Yeah, she's is definitely changing. feeling a, a, a loss. There is a change. I mean, the... If the children are going back and forth between the wife and the husband, the ex-wife and and the ex-husband, then there is going to be a, a loss. I mean, sometimes I wonder if one of the things that you sometimes see in these situations is that the mother feels that she's the one who's constantly telling the kids to do their homework, doing all the hard stuff, and the father has all the fun time. So in some ways, <laughs> maybe I wonder if this sort of expresses sort of a, a loss of of the fun time. The, you know, the children that because that her role has been so defined, more mm -hmm. narrowed and defined is just uh, the sort of disciplinary and the, mm. you know, you know. Well, I think it depends on when, when this picture was actually um, I'm not sure I have a date made. on this one. Uh, the date would make a big difference because generally speaking, if they had a divorce early, early in the century or, or last century, um, generally speaking, the, the woman did not fare well. She couldn't really afford to raise this family on their on That's her true. own, and I don't think they had a setup where where the husband gave a lot of money. So I think that's where the children actually ended up with the with the or, father. Yeah. I think that and, as I said, and she that, was and, kind and, of outcast, or know. just in some ways not being able to have the same role that she had before. Yeah. What she was doing in that and, one, and, so. and and maybe society thought it was her fault. Interesting. Why do you think? Why? That's an interesting question. I hadn't thought about that <laughs> on the phone. We haven't talked about the fault, but why would the... Because I think uh, a, a woman's role in traditional marriages early on really had to do with her obeying the husband and playing the part of the wife and, and, and so forth. So if something did not work out, generally speaking, it would be her. 
who did make it work. Okay, let's let's go on to the next slide, which is called masks, or I'm calling masks on this one. Um, mm. And uh, it's interesting. I'm not sure. Once again, I would say if I looked at this picture, even you know, when doing the research, these were divorce themes and they're masks. But would you have thought this was? Uh, it seems to me that this is the same person, and with each different face, there is a different um, allusion to what's happening in their, in their life. You can see tears in one. You can see, I think the, the second one there is anger. second from the top is anger. I think the blue uh, denotes that. third one has tears. The fourth one looks like the person is re-entering the world. I don't know, it's sort of interesting. I mean, her comments were a little bit about the mask is a theme also, is that uh, when you felt the need to wear a mask and show that I was happy when life had thrown me a devastating turn. And so, so I think she's the, the mask to some extent is a, uh, is a, uh, is a meta facade. metaphor. Yeah, but when, but when a person actually looks at a painting, whatever the artist had said about it, if that wasn't there, and you just looked at it from your point of view, you may not see what the artist had written about it. But that makes me just, this is a quick side note on that. When you've done a painting yeah. like this, and some of these people have done mm -hmm. that, and then you have something in mind, and somebody else looks at it mm -hmm. and sees something totally... Totally different. Totally different. Happens all the time. But how, do you, how do you feel about that when, that, when it's, it's part of the job? I think it's great because, uh, you know, they're coming from where they are, their, their point of view. They're, they're coming from inside of them. So they're seeing what they're transmitting in their life. The artist, on the other hand, is transmitting what he or she sees in their life. So it's got to be co totally, completely different. So when you're doing that, though, when you're, you're, but you're painting, are you painting for basically yourself at that point? Or? I only paint for myself. And then, yeah. you know, with everybody, you know, they, they'll see whatever, whatever they, they see is, uh, I, I, I'm always so um, in awe because I never know what they're really going to see. But because what I see when I get through with it is just my total, you know, it's, it's just about me, what I see. What they see is all about them. It's interesting. You know, well, I've, I've seen that in doing the writing where all of a sudden, and actually in the law, we do that when we're sort of drafting things. <laughs> we'll write something down and then somebody else will see something totally different, you know, and say, but that's not what I meant. I mean, at least in the <laughs> law, we're trying to accomplish something. It's frustrating when, when, when you don't do that. When, right. um, it's, so. it's all in the interpretation. And it's, and, and it's where your state of being is, where, where your mind is at the time that you see this. Do you think some of these things, and we've seen a whole bunch of pictures now, do you think that's helpful to some of the people who are going through divorces? Or I think it is. I think it's very helpful because if they look at the art and they're interpreting it coming from where they are and they have then maybe gone into divorce mediation or gotten some therapy on, on another level and then looked at the same painting several months later, they'll see something completely different because their state of being has changed. Okay, let's go look at the next one. And now we're going to some of the things that children have done. This one, uh, I'm, it's the child stick drawing that we're going to do. And this is, this is artwork of kids. This is one that a child has done whose parents are going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to look at a few more of these as well. But I think this is uh, mm -hmm. what the sort of child did. What do you think? Well, I think the choice of colors, if you notice that they're kind of very dull, they're, they're dark, they're dark blue. Um, there isn't a lot of color in this uh, picture. The sun is in the background, but it's not very bright, and, he, and this child did not color it in. The child, look at the mouth. The, the, the mouth is just straight, has no expression whatsoever on, in, in the mouth part. This child obviously looks like a, he or she is going through something. And the interesting thing is, of course, and this was done by a child going to divorce, and there's, I mean, I assume that's the child. No arms um, and mm. no parents. Well, there are arms. There are arms? I'm some Well, missing. it's coming out of the ears. The arms are coming out of the ears? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, as I said, I don't know enough about children doing, <laughs> doing artwork. I don't know how typical this is of this. The this proportion piece, is a little bit it, off, the, the but, piece, but, those, but those are actually arms. And I'm not sure what the thing is in the lower, little bit lower left 
part of that. Uh, uh, the round bit. circle thing. The round circle. I, I'm maybe a ball. I, I don't know. I don't know. But the child certainly does not look happy. No. Um, this is not a happy child. Yeah, I don't know. But I'll be, you know, the interesting thing, if you could sort of say this, is that you said the, the hands are going into the ears. Perhaps the <laughs> hands are covering the ears. Well, it could very, they don't hearing, want to hear anymore. They don't want to hear anymore. I mean, in a lot of, you know, yeah. you know, Kids sort of express that feeling, mm -hmm. you know, that they want they don't, they don't want to hear more at this point. So right, it would be interesting to hear from their child what they thought about that. Yeah, and then a lot yeah. of some of these are done as art therapy and trying mm -hmm. to get you know the kids to do that and work out things because they, they feel that they do that. I mean, I, and I've I've seen that. And I think we were talking earlier on is that yeah. people learn things and ex express things in different ways. I've certainly right. seen that with clients. I did. Let's go on to the next one, which I think sure. is a little bit more obvious. It's World War Three, um, and. This is a child <laughs> talking about their di divorce, and you see up at even at the top part, you know, male versus female, World War Three. Uh, on a, you know, this is a child, and I'm not sure. Uh, shut up, quit fighting. Mm -hmm. I think this one was, uh, as we were saying, it was as accessible and understandable. I think this is pretty understandable. And I'm trying to think what the there are already two sides to a story, which I think is right uh, fairly profound for the child, and then the heart broke. You know, the tears, the tears, and that one. So this is really a fairly Powerful, mm -hmm. meaningful, and I guess there's an ear there too with uh, the listening and the the heart, with the uh, you know the road sign thing and doing that one. Right. So, uh, but looks a lot of looks like there's a lot of chaos in this. Uh, yeah, a lot of chaos, life. and I, it's for what the child feels. That's what they're sort of saying. What the fi the child feels like when her parents are are fighting. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the one is. Is that in the middle? I says, oh, it's an angry face. Okay, I'm seeing that now. The teeth, the nose, yeah. on this one. So I think. If you, uh, I'm not sure I can't read it, what it says in the bottom left, but I think that that this is a kind of situation, clearly, if a kid did this, mm -hmm. I mean, and this maybe should be mandatory in divorce cases, because I think this clearly, the parents might be saying, gee, the kid's fine, and you see this kind of a picture coming out of it, and it's uh, mm -hmm. it's saying something very, very, very different at this point uh, right. in doing that one, on that one. But I thought that was, that was for mm -hmm. me, it was a little bit disturbing. I mean, I've got it is a disturbing picture. picture to see. Yeah. Um, it's it's mm -hmm. very painful. And one of the reasons I started doing moving out of adversary divorce into uh -huh. mediation was I thought the adversary was doing this. I'm curious if this, I, I would suspect that these, these mm -hmm. kids' parents were not going through mediation, they were going through a, a fairly heavy-duty heavy, right. heavy duty adversary fight um, and do that one. So. Right. And unfortunately, the, the, the children or the child doesn't really get to play a part in this, except sit back and, and be a non-participant. Yeah, I mean, I've just yeah. seen a lot of kids really yeah. damaged by this. And what yeah. we've learned over the years is that the divorce is not as bad as the, it's a bad divorce <laughs> is the problem. And I've, I said to mm -hmm. a lot of the couples I've worked with is saying essentially, it's better to have a, a good divorce than a bad marriage. Um, and so, because mm -hmm. it really can be detrimental. And it, it's just been very painful for me to watch. Let's yeah. go on to the next one, which says sure. Clay, Clay, I, I'm calling the Clay family, um, which is uh, sort of, a, once again, we're into a different media here finally. And mm -hmm. that's a, um, a Clay family in, uh, which looks really intact. I mean, this is a, once again the kids doing you know some clay work on that one. I don't think this mm -hmm. shows. Maybe this is a couple mediating. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's about <laughs> adversary. Yeah. Oh, the little one on the right, sort of looking up, and I'm not sure what the symbol is on the on the kid's sweatshirt in the middle. Um, mm, I, I can't tell either. But you know, it, this this looks like maybe the aftermath of the divorce that things are better. Okay. We've got about three minutes left, so mm -hmm. I want to see if we can keep going with them. The next ones are by an art, by photography. Then we were th there are three of them by Clavin, um, and they're somewhat disturbing photographs. I thought once again children mm -hmm. in doing that one. We're going to see a few of them. This is the kids yeah. sort of seeing the top of the steps. Look very, very. These are photographs. I'm not sure why the lines are in there. Uh, empty closet in the background. I think is fairly significant also. Um, but this, this, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about things saying a message. And is that the brown? What that is? That that I looks say, like is a wedding dress in the back. You think? It looks like a wedding dress. And the so. two children look very sad. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, they do. They they look very sad. Maybe they're not sure exactly what is happening. If I think I read a little bit of the background. This, I think the kids are leaving. This is the, the, the they're actually, this is the, the leaving oh, the okay. family house. There's another one, too, you see, mm -hmm. looking out the window. I mean, these are really upsetting. These are sort of mm -hmm. photographs in that one. But they're, I think they're sort of, the, the divorce yeah. has taken place. The family's being broken up. They're leaving the house. And it's, uh, they're packing. They're yeah. packing to go. Mm -hmm. And he looks like he's a fairly strong. Strong situation too on that one, though. Yeah, um, he's saying goodbye to the house. In the house, to the house in that one too. So I think it's, uh, you know, a little bit uh, 
I said, I, I find he's fairly upsetting to watch at that point uh, on that one. But it I think is that, sad. That he got, yeah. he, I think of the ones we've watched so far, that one yeah. really was maybe more than more painful ones. Um, let's go on to the next one, which is I want to make sure we get, well, that's uh, not the one I was expecting, but that's okay. That's, this is one we talked about once before, which right. was, is called, the, the title of this one is called Divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess maybe my sculpture one got out of order. But uh, once again, it looks like two women. And, and, and I'm not sure this one's accessible. Do you think this one's mm -hmm. accessible at all? Um, it does look like two women, and it looks like one of them is kind of faded out in the background. So it looks like the front, the, the one that's closest to us as we're looking at it, is looking at a past life. Interesting. You think there's sort of a more of a mirror? I mean, the same thing that we did with the two Fridas, mm -hmm. where you have, uh, it's not yeah. two people, but it's really the same person in two different... Uh, I think it's the same person, and one is looking back. And I hadn't thought it's about fading. that. We discussed that before, mm -hmm. but sort of yeah. like I can sort of see that now, and so maybe that's what the there seems to be a, a common theme yeah. of the before and after. What the mm -hmm. life is not going to be the the same after divorce, and I think I, once again, in doing a lot of divorces that we've done, uh, I've seen that with sort mm -hmm. of handling people's shattered expectations on things. So it's it's not easy to you know to do at this point. Uh, on that one, but that was a little bit. I think we're sort of running out of time at this point, and oh, okay. as a weird question of whether we're going to do overtime or not overtime, but I think we got through most of our, our slides. Maybe we can just quickly show the next last slide that we got sure. just flashed on the screen, and we've got a few seconds left mm -hmm. to do them. This is the one, two women, once again, too stark, and maybe before, as you said, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. that way too. That was, you know, as I thought, was fairly difficult uh, telling two people and doing it that way. So that was a, as a, I thought it was a fairly stark, but once again, two women going through a, a lot of pain. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're just about running out of time, Barbara. I want to really thank you. This was fascinating to talk about it. And then once we talk about these shows, we never know what's, you know, what's going to happen. Right. It's sort of like having a kid at that point and, <laughs> and doing all that kind of stuff. But it's been a pleasure doing it. I appreciate it. And I've seen your artwork, which I think is fabulous. I'm sorry we didn't have mm -hmm. an opportunity to, uh, to actually look at that and do that. But mm -hmm. thank you very much again. And you've been watching Divorce TV with Barbara Nasarian and uh, Wally Marcus. And if you want more about our show, please go to our website which you'll see on the screen at the end. And as I said, if you have questions or anything else, you know, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Wally.